So good afternoon and many thanks uh, for your presence, first of all, uh, for your presence in person and also for your presence online. Uh, many thanks to the RAI and uh, to Professor Dr. Shankland for inviting me. This seminar will be largely based on the output of two uh, Euro expert and Caltex two um, ERC uh, funded projects that I did since 1996 and 2022. Uh, Euro expert has been based at the University of Padova, at the University of Oxford. University of Parinanter and now at the University of Sorbonne by um, um, Pantheon. And uh, I thank all these all institutions for hosting EuroExpert. I thank the European Research Council for trusting my skills, my skills as a project leader. And um, I would say I thank, first of all, uh, the team of your expert that allowed uh, the uh, to taking this project to its accomplishment and also the, the several stakeholders and collaborators and um, advisors of your expert who made this research as particularly productive today i will talk about the theoretical framework of cultural expertise the ethics of cultural expertise and selected practices uh, in the UK, the format of cultural expertise in the UK, France, and Italy. And I will start uh, perhaps with the positioning exercise. Um, I, I started to uh, think about the concept of cultural expertise way back in the 90s, when, uh, late 90s, when I was doing my PhD at SOAS. And I um, had the, 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 the fortune, the privilege to observe the establishment of a particular sector of the university, which was, which was started to be called university as enterprise. So the, uh, it was when the, um, some academics were contracted by law firms as country experts. Um, and not, not only at SOAS, but at several universities in the UK. Um, later on, in uh, 2000, I uh, started to, um, to, to, to see um, in the, uh, the practice of providing, to observe the practice of providing expert witnessing in land title, First, uh, First Nation rights. And I was interested in, the, in particular on the fact that at that time, but uh, to many extent still now, uh, there is little comparison or exchange of views on the skills uh, and the capacity of, and experiences of uh, anthropologists who act as expert witnesses in land titles, right, and for example, for uh, before jurisdiction uh, deciding for migration rights and asylum. Mm. This, what this map shows is the, 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 the network that um, was established, uh, was consolidated uh, with EuroExpert, uh, but started already in those years in the 90s, uh, and especially after, the, uh, two, after 2000 and 2007, when I started to be appointed as expert myself. Um, and the first case was, uh, my first, uh, was a case on uh, citizenship, uh, in particular in the United States. And since then, I've been appointed regularly as an expert in the UK and also in the Netherlands. Netherlands. Uh, so uh, I had also the, the privilege uh, and the fortune to, to work as an academic in South Asia, in Australia, uh, in several universities in Europe, uh, shortly in the United States. And this also um, helped me to um, establish a network of a fellow uh, experts, uh, which consolidated later on uh, with your expert. So at the time when I started to, to um, write uh, the, the project of Euro expert, uh, my uh, preliminary investigation with uh, other experts was uh, based on the, on the realization that there was a great variety 
of engagement of anthropologists with law, uh, but there was uh, a lingering question about what is the impact of cultural expertise, and from that question comes uh, the, the, the big question of my project, cultural expertise in Europe, what is it useful for? Um, before talking about impact, uh, we should, of course, define cultural expertise. And I tried to put on this slide uh, the, the trends, which are, of course, not as linear as they, they look on this slide, but I, and they are somewhat overlapping on time and also in, in, on content. But um, the, the, all these trends have uh, had an impact on the formulation of the concept of cultural expertise. And we go, uh, we, we, I think it starts from the, uh, the trend, from the early formulation of uh, anti colonialism in the 40s, uh, the, uh, the formulation, the, 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 the approaches uh, concerning uh, legal pluralism, multiculturalism, the, the answer to multiculturalism uh, and the criticism of interculturalism, neo legal pluralism, critical studies, and the colonial approaches. And these three last trends are the one that had a, a, a greater impact on the formulation of the concept of cultural expertise. Um, I would like to, to, to talk first of all about the, the first trend on anti-colonialism, um, and I refer in particular uh, to Louis Mars, uh, an ethno-psychiatrist uh, from Haiti, who started to, to say and uh, to criticize the, um, health, the mental health establishment that would um, consider um, well-being on the basis of the cultural references of the colonizers. And so that uh, would uh, bring to confuse, for example, possession uh, and mental illnesses. And this is important for understanding some particular uh, instrument of uh, what I call today cultural expertise that have developed later on in France, uh, the, the particular kind of ethnopsychology and intercultural intermediation that inspires uh, to uh, Louis Mars. Um, and we have, of course, in the in the 60s until the, the 90s, the, the legal pluralism, um, the, uh, the, the interest of legal pluralism, the, the, the formulation of the 60s was, and the 50s was that uh, we, we started to overcome the notion of law as a, a state-centered. Uh, the, the limitation of this uh, early uh, legal pluralism was that uh, law was seen um, more like an opposition between state law and non-state law, and non-state law was often uh, the uh, state, uh, it was also called uh, customary law and was the, 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 the law of the uh, colonized. Um, later on, uh, the, the approach of uh, multiculturalism um, are, um, has been uh, important also for, for, the, for the formulation of the theoretical framework of cultural expertise because um, the multiculturalism uh, started to identify the set of duties and obligation of uh, individuals in connection with uh, cultural belonging. And this is uh, so on, within this approach. We we have, for example, Strickwash and Van Broek uh, in 1999 and uh, 2001 uh, that uh, start from the observation that uh, perhaps the um, legal references of certain social group could conflict with the legal references uh, of uh, the, the the majority groups. Uh, on that basis, Van Broek um, defined uh, culturally motivated crime, saying that uh, particular, particular conduct, particular practices uh, could be uh, considered as an offense for the dominant group and uh, instead be uh, completely accepted uh, by a minority group. 
And to this concept um, is also um, related, particularly the notion of cultural defense. Cultural defense um, has been a, a concept which has um, been received in particular by the um, North American legal system. It was developed uh, initially uh, with reference to uh, First Nations, um, and it was in particular in the in the field of uh, criminal law. Initially, it, it was meant as a way of engagement of anthropologists with law, but uh, siding uh, with uh, minority group, in particular the, the, the First Nation, as a way uh, to overcome uh, structural inequality. But uh, from a legal point of view, uh, at uh, the, aim, the specific aim to seek for uh, the mitigation of uh, the uh, of the sentence. Uh, of course, uh, the, the very soon uh, the limitation of uh, multiculturalism was felt in uh, the danger to um, to essentialize culture and the danger to uh, ghettoization of minority group. And this is why also the notion of cultural defense itself uh, developed and um, it, it was extended to um, several, to more fields of law and reformulated as information uh, to the court. Um, we we and, and this is at this time uh, in, in the 90s is where also uh, in the French jurisdiction we have uh, the uh, experimentation with cultural intermediation. Cultural intermediation uh, is uh, positioned within the trends that start to say uh, we need to uh, overcome uh, the danger and the risk of multiculturalism, uh, and we need uh, to to um, to seek um, that, an inter, um, intercultural dialogue, and also uh, we need to ask uh, authority to make place uh, for a minority group and for the um, the request of minority group, and so. Um, These are the new legal pluralism, critical studies, and the colonial approach are the most recent, I would say, trend that uh, had a greater impact on the on the formulation of uh, the notion of cultural expertise, uh, because the new legal pluralism uh, overcomes the, the binary opposition between state law and non-state law, and we start to say that well. Um, State law and non-state law are not necessary, should not necessarily be seen as an opposition, but could be seen instead as a continuum. So we are interested uh, not necessarily uh, about uh, the exclusion of state law and non-state law, but also uh, in the uh, space between state law and non-state law. We talk about interlegalities or dispersed legalities. The critical studies um, are uh, particularly important because uh, culture itself uh, has um, come under scrutiny. We have, of course, Adam Cooper, who makes um, a very convincing argument to say that it is not only uh, culture, the, 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 the cultural reference that have um, explained the practices and explained the conducts of uh, persons, uh, but it is rather the combination of financial, uh, biological, um, and also institutional components that explain uh, the decision and the, the, the conducts of uh, individuals. And so uh, critical studies help us to uh, overcome the danger uh, to uh, perpetuate cultural stereotype and also uh, integrate the uh, notion, the, the role of um, anthropologists in the denunciation, for example, of abuses. Um, the, the colonial approach also uh, has been very important because um, we, we, with the colonial approach, we are um, considering 
uh, in a, from a very practical uh, perspective, how uh, our service uh, in problem solving uh, context um, is useful to uh, fight against inequality. Um, how can we ensure an adequate claim of rights by um, indigenous people or by vulnerable groups, by the beneficiary of cultural expertise, and, and perhaps most important, um, makes uh, a, an explicit point about the voices who should talk about whom. whom. And uh, one of the pillars of uh, the notion of cultural expertise is also uh, the, the, the primacy of uh, the voice uh, of um, the beneficiary of uh, cultural expertise. We have also um, a specialized uh, scholarship uh, that uh, has um, focused on uh, what I call cultural expertise, but has been uh, specifically um, the, um, uh, the, the attention of the, the specialized scholar, uh, um, scholarship has been on uh, First Nation um, uh, cases in which anthropologists have acted as an expert and on uh, expert witnessing in migration cases. And this is mainly in a situation of, uh, in, in, uh, in the UK. Um, as country expert. I have identified three main components that uh, are important um, for, for our uh, analysis, and these are the, 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 the scholars who have studied the, um, the, epistemolo the epistemology of law and an anthropology. Uh, the one who have uh, worked about uh, the technical requisites of expert witnessing and country uh, expertise, and then the practice-based approaches. Um, I, um, I, I mentioned their, their name very, very quickly, but of course, we, uh, they are Clifford, Rosen, Anthony Good, Wilson, John Campbell, uh, Trigger. Um, um, also we have also the, the Scandinavian engaged anthropology, um, and, um, and we have the super diversity uh, trend uh, of uh, or, uh, at, at SOAS, uh, Minsky, Ballard, Shah. Um, so the, the, the one who have um, concentrated on the epistemology of the, all this scholarship, I would say, um, have lamented the poor acknowledgement of anthropology in court. And the one who have concentra concentrated their attention on the epistemology of law and culture have very often concluded uh, for the incompatibility or the incommensurability of the language of law and anthropology. And I I suggest that this consideration link very much with the debate uh, about professionalization of anthropology. The problem, uh, the, the, the issue uh, or the, the, the debate uh, about the professionalization of anthropology date back at least at the time of decolonization, when uh, the colonizer um, tried to professionalize their own role by acquiring uh, the method of anthropology. And the curious tension ensued uh, between uh, those who argued uh, for anthropology as a science and those who argued uh, for anthropology as a method. And in that way, uh, the argument uh, would go toward uh, perhaps the undermining of anthropology and the undermining without doubt of applied anthropology. And this curious tension exists, has been perpetuated, I suggest, um, to the, until now, um, and is connected with an hesitant positioning of anthropologists uh, in a situation of problem solving. At the same time, however, we have a selective transplant uh, method, uh, the method of anthropology, have been adopted by um, uh, cognate uh, disciplines such as history, um, development studies, uh, literature, 
uh, psychology um, and uh, and in that way uh, perhaps curiously similarly to the, the, the time of colonization uh, there is a, 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 a an argument of professionalization so what is the the the, the, the definition that uh, we propose of cultural expertise we started from the very basic observation on the great variety of the use of social science knowledge for dispute resolution in court and out of court but seemingly very little acknowledgement by the court um, and by social scientists as well as dis disciplinary uh, bodies so we needed to overcome this uh, paradoxical uh, invisibility. And to the same, we have reworked the first definition of uh, cultural expertise, which dates back to 2009, and we have re-elaborated it interdisciplinary and uh, intersectorally uh, for addressing both academics and practitioners. So um, we say cultural expertise is the special knowledge deployed by the experts of laws and culture for assisting decision-making authority in the assessment of evidence with information on the social legal backgrounds of facts and persons involved. Cultural experts must be independent and afford a proposition of critical affirmation. This definition features uh, three important components. I suggest the special knowledge, which is, of course, relative to the situation, interdisciplinary situation. Um, the assistance to the court in a specific set of circumstances and independence. And this is how I see cultural expertise positioning vis-a-vis -vis, uh, other instrument instruments that fall within the, the, the framework of cultural expertise, uh, but are future uh, a, a mild level of interdisciplinary. And I think about, for example, ethnopsychology, cultural defense, cultural intermediation, country expertise, and the cultural test for judges. Um, and then we have uh, the, the, the kind of cultural expertise that are discipline based, based but also fall under the, the, the umbrella concept of cultural expertise. We have uh, forensic biological anthropology and forensic social anthropology within anthropology itself, uh, but we have also a kind of cultural expertise that uh, are discipline based uh, within the social sciences broadly speaking within the arts, history, and uh, for example, also journalism. And uh, what, 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 uh, what is important also is to explain the reference to culture. Um, the reference to culture responds to the need to uh, qualify the special knowledge uh, provided by social scientists and identify a um, comprehensive future of our expertise in a way that accounts for the ethics and the quality of the service provided, but also overcomes the disadvantages of the fragmentation of the various types of engagement of social scientists with law and covers a broad field which is interdisciplinary and intersectoral. The, the way we have developed cultural expertise uh, is that we, we, we argue that must, uh, cultural expertise must be supported by uh, an ethical framework uh, which insists on the primacy of the voices of the beneficiary of cultural expertise and positions against cultural determinism. So, when we talk about the ethics, similarly to the literature, similarly to the uh, both uh, broad area of theory that have impacted the notion of cultural expertise, we have a, a gen general reference uh, to the um, ethics uh, of anthropology and also specific reference uh, to uh, the ethics and the, the ontology of um, of expert witnessing. 
we know that uh, the engagement of anthropologists with applied anthropology has attracted in the history of anthropology two main criticism. And one uh, is the um, closeness of certain anthropologists with uh, colonization and the unethical co-optation of American anthropologists into uh, counterinsurgency programs in Latin America and Southeast Asia. And this is uh, directly linked uh, with uh, a lack of credi uh, credibility of anthropology in the history of, um, of the discipline. And the, 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 those who have uh, criticized and identified this uh, lack uh, within, the notion, within, within the history of anthropology have gone as far as um, argue for the incapacity uh, of anthropologists to engage with law. The, 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 the response uh, of anthropology, uh, the Institutional um, Association of Anthropology, has been a reaffirmation of the principle, do not harm principle, and against uh, colonization and against uh, unethical cooptation. Uh, so these are the references that are uh, valid uh, for uh, the framework of cultural um, expertise. But there is uh, a more specific uh, framework that argue must support um, cultural expertise as a service of problem solving uh, in, in uh, society. And uh, the, the, the scholar on expert witnessing uh, have already identified the procedural requisite of cultural expertise and an awareness of uh, the limitation of our role as an expert. I would say that uh, in the scholarship uh, that uh, has addressed uh, expert witnessing, we have two uh, main uh, position, the uh, canonical, canonical engagement and the critical engagement. The canonical engagement is a position of uh, those uh, anthropologists who act as, who say um, the court is not the right place for advocacy. And the critical engagement perhaps uh, somehow opposite to, to the canonical engagement, uh, <coughs> argue, sorry. Argue uh, for the need uh, to uh, fight uh, for structure and inequality in court and uh, if need there be uh, to uh, stretch uh, the role of um, academics who, are, who uh, are appointed as uh, expert in court uh, to ensure a substanti substantial protection of the beneficiary of expert witnessing. And I would say they, they, they are both perfectly uh, defendable position. Uh, I suggest perhaps, however, the first one is the more secure, but potentially less powerful. And the second one is potentially more powerful, but less secure because it is more, more likely to be discarded by, uh, by the court or by judges uh, who um, are perhaps ideologically uh, differently positioned or perhaps don't understand um, the, 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 the ethics and the ontology of expert. And I would say that uh, on learning from the experience of this scholarship, we may um, go further and combine these two uh, positions for the ethics of cultural expertise, uh, we, we could uh, adopt a position of procedural neutrality, which is, how it, which is um, particularly cognizant of uh, the uh, duty, the obligation, but also of the rights of expert witnessing. And this allowed to secure a place, a solid position in, in the legal process and uh, um, secure 
the primacy of the beneficiary. And this um, procedural neutrality should be supported by the, a position that I call uh, of critical affirmation, uh, which uh, means the, the capacity of the expert witness to disagree with the um, authority decision, with the decision making authority, and to fight actively fight uh, for um, against uh, inequalities, but from a position of um, of authority. We, within our pro so the, the the new definition of cultural expertise uh, allowed. Uh, to collect uh, quantitative and qualitative data. I have here uh, a short uh, snapshot of uh, the kind of data that we collected. Uh, we, um, uh, our research has uh, developed on um, 16 countries um, and uh, we have collected three, uh, we, we have distributed the questionnaire to lawyers, judges, experts and the beneficiary cultural expertise uh, for a total of 3,500 respondents. We have um, collected uh, 4,000 judgments, uh, 1,800 expert reports. Uh, we have identified 1,600 sites of cultural expertise. Uh, we have also adopted uh, qualitative methods and we have um, a total of 150 interviews. 100 hours of footage. Uh, the, uh, the way we have collected data, the, the way we have collected data um, in a, has been a mixed method. Um, and so um, uh, of uh, collaboration also with uh, the expert and the legal professionals at all stages of the, pro uh, of the process. Um, and this has allowed also to consolidate, to establish and uh, we, with the passage of time to, to consolidate um, collaboration and, uh, with uh, professional association and academic institution. Uh, I would now present very briefly the extracts uh, from the data set on the UK, France and Italy. Uh, this data have been collected by um, Bridget Prince and Sarah Elgrieu, Christian Benier, Valeria Verbellini and Tommaso Spriccoli. And the visualization were done by Mario Sorden. So uh, the respondents of uh, our questionnaire, uh, we, we distributed the questionnaire of um, about 20 minutes to, to our respondent. Uh, the, um, this questionnaire was um, quantitative, um, but was distributed by data collector who um, taught the language of the respondents, are familiar with the legal system of the respondents, and also um, had the role of bridging, uh, bridging the, um, the, the, the academic definition of cultural expertise into the uh, legal, social legal references of the respondents. And so they were asked, among other questions, um, if uh, they consider cultural expertise useful. And we, we, we see that here that France position first for the position of the usefulness of cultural expertise was the United Kingdom and Italy position re respectively four and six. Um, and these data are particularly interesting to, to be interpreted with in combination with the other set of data that I will show uh, later, and also uh, the, the, of course the qualitative um, interview that um, give us uh, highlights on uh, and uh, uh, on the on on the on how to to um, to interpret further the, this information. 
So uh, the first um, data set that I uh, offer here is the frequency of expert appointment. And you see that in all the three countries, uh, the expert appointment are rare. This is not something that should surprise us because experts uh, in the legal field are appointed when, uh, only when uh, the court consider that um, they don't possess the necessary experience and the necessary knowledge for um, deciding the case. So it should be a case that exceeds the ordinary experience, except for certain fields of law in which uh, the uh, knowledge, uh, recent knowledge about the, the context, the cultural context of the fact is um, a requirement. Uh, but what is uh, perhaps uh, interesting here is uh, that while France has a striking majority of judges and lawyers who have never uh, appointed an expert, Italy and the UK have a great variety of occurrences of expert appointment. And this, that we, we will understand more when we see um, the, the other uh, data uh, that show, uh, that give us some hints about an opposition between uh, the uh, civil law country and the, um, um, where uh, we have a greater invisibility uh, of expert and the common law country where experts are apparently more frequently uh, appointed. Uh, we uh, here this, this slide show the typology of experts. Uh, we uh, we see again that in France there is a much more more contact compact uh, typology of experts. Um, both in France and in, and in Italy, the knowledge of the native language of the litigants is an identifying factor. Uh, for cultural experts, sociology is the discipline, uh, while in the UK the most common type of experts are the country experts and anthropology is the academic discipline. And this is also to be connected with the modality of appointment of experts who in France are mostly in-house experts, while in the UK and in Italy are um, experts who are uh, outside uh, the legal uh, system. The remuneration of experts is always a, a, a hot um, argument for, for, for experts. Um, and the most common form of remuneration of experts in France and the UK is the standard hourly rate, while in Italy is other. And this is because in Italy, uh, experts are mainly remunerated through association. Um, to be noted also that the UK show a high percentage of experts that work pro bono, and we uh, have the, we ha we have addressed this um, uh, the, this aspect uh, with qualitative interviews uh, because comparatively uh, with the other uh, country, our research the UK has uh, a, a, a relative um, efficient system of legal aid, which cover also the remuneration of experts. But um, the, our uh, qualitative interview showed that uh, the pro bono work is connected with a high level of social engagement, uh, but also a more, a more pragmatic reason, which are the fact that uh, it is still difficult uh, for experts to secure payment, and um, exp some experts are reluctant to identify themselves as such uh, because of uh, the hesitation uh, to be identified as uh, applied anthropologists and also to hesitation, uh, hesitation related to their employer because they, they are uh, mainly academics whose uh, main employer uh, is an academic institution. Um, the fields of law are also, I suggest, an interesting um, data. Italy and the UK show a greater variation of fields of law where experts are appointed. However, in the three countries, immigration and asylum, refugee law and international human rights are the fields, followed by family law and criminal law. Uh, 
And in France, uh, criminal law is at the third place, whilst in Italy and the UK, family law is at the third and fourth place. And these data too are better understood in the light of qualitative data that shows that um, in certain jurisdictions, experts are appoint, uh, don't need to be appointed because there are in-house experts. So are, uh, there are experts that are in integral, integral part uh, of the tribunal or uh, the decision-making uh, jurisdiction. The type of cases also we have France with with a very compact uh, typology of cases. We have forced forced marriage, persecution, terrorism, murder. Uh, a greater variety is since, uh, for Italy. Uh, a variety of local practices, religious minorities, organized crime, and natural disasters and climate change. But even greater, I would say, in the UK. Uh, we have many cases in the UK um, addressing um, matters of belonging uh, because uh, from matters of, from identification of belonging, um, there are connections with rights and obligation um, or uh, protection. Uh, matters of extradition uh, and perhaps um, interesting also uh, cases of money laundering and tax and investment that in primary case would not be uh, considered uh, as um, um, uh, fields in, of law where uh, perhaps cultural expertise is needed. We have also um, identified the out-of-court side of cultural expertise. Uh, these were organized along four categories, uh, which were identified by that data collector uh, as education. You see the, the blue flags, healthcare, red flags, uh, detention centers, purple, and multi-sector yellow. And for the respondents of the three countries, the most common sites of cultural expertise is in court, uh, followed by hospitals in France and NGOs in Italy and in the UK, uh, and the detention centers at the third place for the three countries. And the last set of data uh, concerns training. Uh, the, there was uh, interestingly a consensus uh, among the respondents uh, of our uh, questionnaire on, on the need, actually a high demand for training, both uh, for the legal profession and uh, for um, experts. Um, the situation is extremely uneven. We have in France um, a um, uh, centralized management of the training for the legal professions at the Judicial Academy, uh, the uh, Ecole Nationale de la Magistrature. The Judicial Academy in France has historically included ethnopsychology and intercultural mediation uh, as a training, and now have also integrated cultural expertise mm -hmm. as systematic training, um, which is managed at the centralized level. We also are in the process to um, Obtain, obtain approval for the establishment of a university diploma. And uh, interesting, uh, in tribunals um, have been contacting us uh, for um, training on uh, cultural expertise in, in France. Um, in Italy, um, the, the, the situation is uh, equally um, uneven, I would say. Uh, most training, uh, uh, perhaps I, I should say there are no institutional trainings, but uh, there are several uh, individual in initiatives of academic mentorship, in-house training by association, 
and uh, stands out the initiative of the Tribunal of Pisa uh, that uh, whose president has been uh, a collaborator of uh, the, the network of the expert and has taken the initiative to uh, adopt uh, cultural expertise systematically in all the, the cases where the judges uh, considered as uh, appropriate, um, and they have launched uh, a process of uh, recruitment of um, experts uh, with, with your expert playing uh, a role, uh, an advisory role for identifying the requisite and providing the training. Um, and, uh, the UK, um, the, the, uh, in the UK, there are um, quite a number, in, compared with the other countries, there are um, trainings for expert, expert witnesses. However, this training are very expensive and most importantly perhaps don't gather for uh, anthropological expert witnessing. Um, there is sporadic academic mentorship but uh, to, to my knowledge on a very individual basis um, there, there, there is some training in the context of um, university as enterprise and then um, most recently uh, the initiative of anthropology uh, association this slide um, offer the, the 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 format of cultural expertise uh, that uh, for france italy and the uk um, I, in, 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 the, in the main sites. So we have a very centralized uh, management in France uh, with in-house expert and three main sites uh, of the type of cultural expertise that, that have been developed in France. Um, the Court National des Droits d'Asile uh, is the court of asylum law competent to hear appeals against the decision of the French Office for the Protection of Refugee and Stateless Persons in matters of refugee status and subsidiary protection. And they had in-house expert, perhaps uh, similar to the in-house expert of the Home Office, um, in the UK, uh, and they had uh, this in-house expert um, starting from the 80s at least. Um, in the 90s, um, two, two uh, types or uh, the, a specific kind of um, uh, cultural expertise, which is called intercultural mediation or uh, ethno-psychology uh, as developed in the jurisdiction of um, uh, juvenile court and criminal law. And this um, inspired from the anti-colonial perspective of Louis Mars has been developed then by the uh, Department of um, uh, Anthropology of Law at Sorbonne uh, by Etienne Leroy um, and in court by uh, Martin de Maximi, um, Thierry Beranger, um, et Toby Nathan. Uh, and uh, the most recent uh, type uh, it has been the appointment of the expert uh, after the, um, the attack uh, to Bataclan uh, in Paris. Um, and um, where uh, experts have been appointed at uh, anthropologists, historians, uh, uh, and other social scientists as have been appointed as experts at the Office of the Public Prosecutor for investigation, to assist the investigation of the public prosecutor. The, the, the claim of uh, this expert is that they are in-house experts but are independent. Um, in, in, in the, the case of Italy is uh, perhaps uh, a, a format that is to some extent opposite to the one in France. It's extremely decentralized. Uh, 
um, two types of experts that perhaps inspire from the format of France and the format of the UK. So we have uh, a typology of expert that very similar to the country expert and the typology that it's um, more in the field of ethno psychology. Uh, these are mainly managed by subcontract uh, society uh, association uh, that um, provide expert uh, to the decision making authorities. And um, in, um, in um, Italy, there is a high level of judicial activism, especially in the field of migration. And this is how uh, the, the kind of uh, combined um, format, which is um, probably not, uh, not decentralized, but not uh, centralized, uh, is uh, the, the UK format in which um, three fields of um, management of uh, cultural expertise overlap uh, and, um, and inform uh, the, the service of social scientists uh, to tribunal, uh, the, the, <clears throat> the civil society, the country expert and high level of lawyers activism, um, which is different from uh, the situation in Italy in, in where the um, judges activism is uh, prominent. I would say that perhaps in the UK uh, more prominent than the lawyers activism. I conclude here with this slide, um, <coughs> which summarizes the findings of our project. And in cultural expertise, as the um, is perceived both as uh, potentially advantages and potentially disadvantages. <coughs> so, in cultural expertise is useful, <coughs> or when cultural expertise is useful, as the potential to pro. I am really sorry. This, yeah. <coughs> Okay, just a second. Yeah. Just have a <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so when cultural expertise is useful has the potential to provide uh, visibility, um, inclusion, support, and accountability. Visibility uh, meant has to give visibility and authority to the variety of instruments of cultural expertise, inclusion in terms of fighting against the discrimination with acknowledgement of cultural diverse, diversity in the justice, justice system, and support, support to overcome the lack of cohesion among social scientists acting as experts through collegiality and training, and uh, eventually accountability, accountability articulating as strengthened ethics and quality of service vis-a-vis -vis social minorities and indigenous people. The potential disadvantages of cultural expertise are in the difficulty or perceived difficulty of social scientists to be listened to by the decision-making authority, the danger of uh, cultural determinism, uh, the danger that culture may serve as justification of crime and factor of discrimination. Some respondents from qualitative interview have also told us that uh, the use of cultural expertise at the lower level of jurisdiction is connected with less uh, uh, likelihood of appeal. 
Um, we have identified three main indicators of impact of cultural expertise, and these are stringent conclusion from a very pragmatic perspective. These are stringent conclusion, first hand data, and reliable sources. And I, I suggest that this has uh, the, 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 the potential uh, to uh, make projection on perspective impact, but they should be monitored and regularly updated. We, we actually we also created a, a, a prototype uh, to uh, monitor and update, update uh, this, um, these indicators of impact. Our data also show the interest to uh, broaden the definition and the notion of the approach to diversity in Europe in terms of policy making. Uh, the, the existing policy in Europe <clears throat> stress on the notion of diversity and inclusion within Europe, but um, we argue that it is time uh, to have a broadened vision about uh, diversity and to explicitly recognize the primacy of the voice of the social minorities and indigenous people in the matter that um, in which they are concerned and to address uh, diversity beyond uh, Europe. <clears throat> Eventually, our projects, your iceberg and cult types, are um, going toward completion. But we are honored that one of our prototypes, cult text, was selected for the proof of concept, which indicates a potential involvement in the future years to come. Um, and uh, for our roles uh, as assistant policy making, advisory role, training, and the delivery of expertise through our network of experts. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much indeed. Exactly five o'clock. Look at that now. Perfect timing. What, 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 what could be better? Well, Comments and questions from the floor. Who would like to who would like to start with a question for our speaker? Please. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. Um, thank you, Olivia, for a very interesting paper. It strikes me um, there's tremendous diversity, uh, both between experts, between courts, uh, and the role of courts and the role of law in, in these different countries that you've that you've explored. Um, Initially, I think you were looking at common law and contrasting that with can we call the other type uh, civil law? Civil law, yes. And I wonder if that distinction, which is which is prominent in the teaching of law across Europe and, and North America, right, is is also an important distinction, uh, or it tells you anything about um, the role of expertise, cultural expertise, in these different legal domains. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, John. Yes, um, I um, well, from a legal point of view, I think that the, the, the opposition of civil law and common law is uh, there is a, a trend uh, to overcome uh, the, 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 the binary position between uh, common law and civil law. Um, and we have now a system like Italy, which, which uh, self defines are as a mixed system. Um, nevertheless, I think that we, we, we can identify uh, some, uh, broadly speaking, some uh, different practices, uh, particularly uh, related to the procedure. Uh, and that, in which uh, so the legal procedure impacts the role of the expert in the, in the civil law and, uh, and common law uh, system. And one that um, came, uh, that, that appeared is that um, in, the, in, the, in the common law system, uh, the, the role of expert is perhaps more evident and uh, less evident in the, in the civil law system. Uh, the civil law system also have uh, more uh, types of experts that are in-house. Uh, and so we, we, uh, when experts are in-house, uh, there is no need or, uh, to formally appoint them, not always need to formally appoint them. And um, uh, uh, even when they are appointed, 
they are less feasible. And so this, this was important for us to realize uh, because uh, the, there was, we needed to go more in the field uh, for um, uh, identify uh, the, the various type of cultural expertise that still uh, exist in the civil law country, but are not immediately evident from, uh, from records. Uh, we have uh, records of the existence of um, experts in, uh, in the common law uh, system, uh, but less so in the civil law system. So I'll answer your question. Yes, please, please. Well, thank you very much, uh, Larry, for a very, very interesting presentation and uh, the paper. Uh, you showed a map of Europe uh, where you, you, try, you tried or where you uh, established a framework, and uh, uh, we could see that, uh, for instance, in Scandinavia, uh, there was something called not useful or less useful. Does it mean that uh, uh, there is no cultural uh, expertise there? or uh, that they didn't find your research as interesting. So how do you explain that the discrepancy between East Europe and, the, and, and, and uh, these three countries that you uh, selected for the presentation? And if I may just uh, ask uh, if you could uh, uh, provide us a little insight into uh, the very uh, specific case that you were engaged on. What does it look like when were you engaged? If you could just let us speak a little bit to the practical side of it all. Uh, in France, you mentioned you were engaged by uh, the Prosecutor General, right? Oh, no, 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 not myself. And not yourself? No, no, no. Okay, okay. So, in, in that case, I'll just start to keep to the first question. Okay, okay. Yes. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, you, you are uh, right. In, the, in some uh, country of uh, North country and also East Europe, there is a trend of uh, less appreciation of cultural expertise. I wouldn't say um, completely, uh, there is no majority uh, of, um, of, uh, of um, people uh, responded that don't appreciate cultural expertise, but a less certain level of appreciation of cultural expertise. Um, in, um, in the way we have formulated it, um, it was not about the acquisition of the research, although uh, we don't know uh, in, in how, how, what kind of message eventually was um, received by the respondents. We, we never know as, uh, as a researcher uh, as exactly uh, this is, uh, would be a research in itself. Uh, to, to understand, to, to, to be uh, completely um, aware, we, we can make, uh, I would say, we can make guess. we, we uh, guesses about how um, our role is perceived and um, we, we, are, we are trying to position ourselves um, according to the, to the uh, ethical guidelines uh, in order to ensure uh, the, that our respondents um, understand, uh, the, the, uh, are completely aware of the aim of our research, uh, but perhaps uh, exactly um, we, we have no control about uh, exactly the, the, all the details of the perception of our own research. Um, but uh, as far uh, as we could tell, um, or as far as uh, our explanation of our research would go, um, we are not um, advocating the use of cultural expertise, but we were more interested in the perception of, of uh, people about cultural expertise. And so, uh, <clears throat> the, um, the, the one who uh, say that cultural expertise is not useful, um, are um, usually saying this in a, in a um, you may remember the, the, the last slide in which I listed the, the potential disadvantages of cultural expertise. So um, the, the, the expert uh, 
uh, fear that our lawyers also fear that counter arguments may not be uh, powerful because uh, the court may not listen to or uh, some um, respondents may fear also that um, culture may be used to justify crimes or to justify uh, conducts that are against international human rights. Um, and, um, <clears throat> and that um, also uh, that uh, there is an opposition perhaps between uh, notion and expectation of formal equality and substantial equality. Uh, so the one who are particularly <clears throat> trust uh, who trust uh, that uh, institutions are able to um, to secure uh, equality uh, to uh, their citizen tend to say that we uh, tend to uh, trust into the formal um, set of uh, duties and obligation provided by the legal system. <clears throat> Whereas the, the respondent who uh, are interested in, um, in, in, in arguing for a substantial equality are uh, referring to the need to ensure uh, that um, the, the litigants uh, are listened to uh, also uh, in reference, uh, reference that are not necessarily uh, the written law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, so uh, uh, if I may, uh, if we are already in the region of Eastern Europe, I'm uh, from Central Europe, uh, Bratislava, Slovakia, uh, Komenius University, uh, and as I was, I would like to ask you, you've presented us uh, several fields of cultural expertise. Uh, would, you, would you place possibly within the field of cultural intermediation also interpreting or interpreters, um, in case they would be trained, could they possibly be engaged as cultural experts, especially in countries where cultural experts are not employed yet, mm. yet implicitly they are asked the questions as if they were cultural experts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it is, the, the, the role of interpreter is really uh, very important. Uh, and uh, and crucial for certain jurisdiction, especially where where there are no cultural experts, because uh, very often happens um, that um, decision making authority asks interpreter questions that are um, that uh, that concern culture. Uh, the interpreters, and this depends very, from a strictly legal. Um, legal, uh, from the point of view of the legal procedure, this is not a good practice. Ex uh, interpreter should never uh, be asked and should never answer questions uh, that concerns culture. But at the same time, in the, in the everyday practice of the management of uh, justice, uh, this is the only, uh, the, it is the only interlocutor that the judges they have uh, to um, understand the context of fact. And so the interpreter, I would say, uh, is in a very difficult position uh, because it is already a very specialized and highly skilled uh, capacity in, uh, that they provide to the court. And in addition to that, to answer uh, matters of culture, it's, it's an additional burden, um, which unfortunately uh, is uh, it's heavy on the specific as the interpreter uh, in that uh, situation when they, when they are asked this question, um, because uh, perhaps they, 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 some, some interpreter may be in the may feel the conundrum of um, us addressing uh, this need of the court to understand more and and also the need of uh, the, the the applicant to explain more but it can be very 
sensitive and very tricky. But what if it was unethical to not to intervene? You know, even from the point of the ethical code of literature, there are some cases. I think so. I think so. It's a really difficult situation. Yeah, and of course, interpreters are completely vital in the in the health service, and there you really couldn't only literally translate if you're an interpreter, because the way people express their concerns about health and illness are, of course, so 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 uh, uh, localized, as it were. But if if the interpreter did a literal translation, we wouldn't get very far with the treatment. So the interpreter there, and in those cases, has to has to really. Uh, argue very strongly for what the patient wants to say and vice versa has to argue very strongly for what the doctor wants to say. So they are far more than just an, an, an interpreter. Um, uh, in, in, and of course, um, health interpretation is used every day, a hundred times, a thousand times across the, uh, across the country. Um, but yes, I think this is the kind of point that you wanted, you. wanted to make, isn't it? But, but please. Just following on exactly from what David's saying, um, the objectivity of the cultural expert. Are we to assume that uh, he is in fact totally objective and that he will want to explain the overriding culture to the minority who could be in court, the, mi the minority uh, sect that could be in court, or does he, in your view, have a duty to try and, well, not a duty, but an obligation to explain to the court and the establishment the uh, particular view and I had in mind when you were introducing your subject and laying the foundations you talked in terms of a, something that was a crime that could be recognized by uh, the court but not by the minority did you have something in mind that we could all understand on that uh, this uh, the, the notion of uh, cultural motivated crime has been formulated by Strikosh in 2001 one, uh, and uh, it has been it has been formulated for the first time uh, academically so um, in, the, in the field of legal anthropology and it, it, it must be positioned uh, I, I suggest uh, in the in the trend of multiculturalism in which um, we, we were discovering uh, the fact that um, the, the different social uh, groups have uh, different refer different cultural references um, and so uh, at that time uh, it was uh, an appreciation of the diversity and uh, perhaps an idealized uh, suggestion that of inclusion with the passage of time, uh, this um, definition of, mature, um, of cultural motivated crime became, uh, I, I suggest, difficult to to, to use uh, in the in the legal setting because we would, uh, if we, the use of this uh, of of this <coughs> definition would uh, connect. Uh, some groups with uh, some crimes, and this is completely wrong. It is not uh, the, the, the aim of anthropology, it's actually against the, the ethics of anthropology. So I, I suggest perhaps we, it is not appropriate to use this uh, notion in the legal uh, context of today. Uh, I, I would suggest that this should be positioned in the history of uh, the anthropology of law uh, and should be positioned at the time when multiculturalism had uh, the ideal uh, of uh, inclusion uh, through the appreciation of the diversity of culture and perhaps didn't, we, we didn't we were, uh, we, we were not in the position to uh, elaborate um, effective instrument for for inclusion and the uh, interculturalism uh, dem demonstrated the criticism that came later demonstrated this very uh, effectively uh, the the, uh, the the danger of um, cultural determinism uh, so to to identify uh, uh, to to explain a certain practices with uh, the cultural reference of a social group um, we, 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 can, we, we can explain the, the, the 
context they, they, we, we can uh, provide a notion, uh, a notion from the field, we can provide uh, information, uh, first and data uh, that we have observed uh, in the field. But uh, this data should, this uh, set of information should not, in my view, be prescriptive. Judges, the court have, uh, are the best equipped for reaching a decision. I think that's ter terribly important because on the times when I've acted as an expert witness, usually it's not, uh, uh, usually it's been the defence, but they've always tried to ask me, in your opinion, is it culturally plausible that this happened? Because that's part of my defence is the implication, well, they can't say that. So is it normal that when a man is angry, he should kill his wife in this culture? And they try to get a reduced sentence. Is it normal in this culture that, that, that a man could be manipulated into becoming a drug mule because of family links? See, these, these questions. And I would always resist as strongly as I possibly could answering them because I would say, well, it, you know, in the court, what we're judging is the evidence here. And I don't want you to put me in a position where I'm obscuring the quality or otherwise of the evidence, which is a bit. The, 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 but I used to have quite strong arguments uh, with, with, the, with the defense lawyers about, about, about this. And one indeed was so impressive that in the end I said, well, look, if you, if you make me go ahead with this, I'm afraid I will, be, I will be drawing conclusions in the court, which are the opposite of what you're trying to make me say. And he, and he backed off and said he'd find some other expert witness to lie for him. Um, but uh, so thank you for your question. Thank you for your answer, because it, it does help clarify an absolutely crucial point as to whether an expert witness is talking about the evidence or whether they're talking about the culture of the people in the, in the court. If they're talking about the evidence, then what is the role of their culture in assessing the evidence, if you see what I mean? Can they talk about the evidence independently of the culture? I think that the role of the expert is assistant to the decision-making authority in assessing the evidence. But it is a role of assistance. It is a, not a role of decision-making. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, we, we can talk about uh, the, the cultural background of active persons. We, we can provide uh, information, but we need, as you did uh, in the cases that you have uh, mentioned, uh, we need to establish uh, boundaries with, um, we, we, there are lawyers that ask, that would like us to say, uh, to, to establish a causality, causality link, uh, which I suggest we shouldn't. So I just, uh, as a Jew, um, it's a big principle through Jewish culture in every country throughout the world, Dina Malchuta Dina, the law of the country is the law. Whatever the Jewish take may be on it, the law of the country is the one that we immediately understand we have to fulfill. When in Rome, be a Roman, yes, yes, exactly. Um, I think, oh, but I think this gentleman here was first, um, but please, and then, and, then, and then you, please go ahead. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, sort of similar to what was just said, you mentioned the cases surrounding the Bataclan attacks. I was just curious what kind of information a cultural expert would provide in a case like that. Uh, yes, the, the, the case of um, the, the appointment of, of, of anthropologists as expert in the investigation is quite a unique uh, kind of uh, cultural expertise. Um, as uh, you may, uh, as I, I, I hope I, I have conveyed, um, the, the cultural expertise is a very broad, it's proposed as an umbrella concept uh, with the aim also to give visibility to all the kinds of cultural expertise. And perhaps uh, the, the, the case of anthropologists appointed at, at the Office of the Public Prosecutor uh, are, if we see it as a, um, um, as a continuum of, of all the types, I would say, of a, as a spectrum, they, they, they are rather at the extreme point of the spectrum. And the, the, the immediate question that we, uh, we ask are this, uh, can this expert claim independence? 
because they are with the public prosecutor. When, when I, uh, we at the office, we, they are not with the public prosecutor, but they are appointed at the office of the public prosecutor. Um, last November in uh, 2022, uh, really last November, I convened a, a, a panel on the professionalization of cultural, uh, on the position of cultural expertise vis a vis the professionalization of anthropology. And uh, one of the panelists uh, was uh, exactly uh, the, the expert that was appointed um, at the office of the public prosecutor. And uh, it was interesting the, the, the reaction of uh, some uh, of the audience uh, asked this precise question how, how do you, uh, um, some were in fact shocked. Uh, the, of the uh, to the fact to hear about a, an expert uh, that uh, an anthropologist that would uh, wo uh, be appointed at, at the office of the public prosecutor. Um, the, the, the argument of uh, these anthropologists is that they are appointed by the Ministry of Justice, but uh, they are independent. And uh, that the in the that the the state uh, secure their position of independence. That it's the legal system that uh, protect their position of independence. Uh, he is uh, also the author of the chapter uh, about um, cultural expertise and terrorism in a, a book about uh, which is um, was titled is uh, cultural expertise law and rights a comprehensive guide and which will be out in a few months uh, in open access so I, I, I encourage you to 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 read this book um, and um, I, I don't have uh, a personal position uh, about uh, the, the, the independence of uh, this um, uh, of, of anthropologists with the office of the public prosecutor. Perhaps um, nobody has uh, ever uh, proposed me to, to um, a role of this kind, and if they were, um, I would probably refuse. But uh, it's a personal choice. I had an experience with the public with the prosecutor's office and it was dealing with um, something with terrorism but more um, <laughs> um, spread of information on, on, on great terrorism. Um, I kept my independence but I feel more independent because um, the question that I was asked by the, 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 the state prosecutor's office uh, was not against or for the person. And I did not have the pressure of the lawyer who instructed me and who have absolutely um, the, the duty to defend this case. I feel it very more independent. And I was surprised because I feel like uh, I was doing my job without anybody, you know, because the lawyer went there. And that is one of the questions that I asked why the judge or somebody else did not instruct the expert. Because when you are instructed by the lawyer, of course, his duty is to, to defend this case. So even the question, the way he formulated the question, sometimes I have to even say I, I'm going to restructure the question and you know put it in my way just to put my independence. Because it's like he's guiding you to say this, say this, say this. And if you see something else, normally if you are independent, you have to raise it. But because it's the way of handle the case, he's not allowed to raise issue that could put him in difficulty. And also, I would like to also you could explain the issue of the primacy of the beneficiary. Because I had a case where I have evidence that the beneficiary was lying. But uh, I was not allowed to say that because the lawyer who handled the case didn't want me to put it even as a question. But at the end, we have um, a decision where all the geographical um, settings are wrong. Because you can go to internet to go to that country, see what is going in. Because we have to rely on what the beneficiary say. Yeah. Okay. Well, in your question, there are perhaps, I, uh, as I would say, um, to to at least 
two components. Uh, so when when it talked about the the voice of beneficiary is um, the, uh, the 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 I position uh, in the uh, debate or the, the, the discussion of uh, anthropology that uh, scrutinize itself. Uh, saying uh, who has the right to talk about a uh, certain social group. And uh, within the, the, the argument, um, identifying a historical view <coughs> of majority over uh, minority groups. Um, so the risk is uh, for um, anthropologists who have as expert, if these anthropologists are always uh, the uh, belonging to the majority, uh, we risk to, the, to perpetuate historical uh, discrimination, uh, structural power imbalance. Now, how? Uh, whereas on a on a uh, at the level of principle, I think that there is a consensus about the need to um, overcome discrimination and power imbalance. It is not always easy to understand how this should be done in practice. Um, and and there, are, there is a variety of positions, some uh, who argue that um, for, for uh, the, the voice of indigenous people and the voice of uh, vulnerable groups uh, to, 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 be, uh, to have the exclusive power uh, to, uh, to be listened to in matters that concern these groups. And some who say uh, yes, but there are cases in which um, this is not possible for a variety of reasons and um, we again we have a chapter in the same book um, cultural expertise in race and race by um, Charles Van Mingin in which uh, she proposes also uh, some specific case studies in which she say um, as a principle and perhaps in the majority of cases uh, the person who belong to a certain group are the, the best positioned to argue for the right of this social group. But there are some, certain specific cases in which this may not be uh, the best choice uh, for the interest of uh, the group or for the interest of the person involved. And um, so how to, 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 uh, to deal with that? And my suggestion is that decision in this uh, should be with the beneficiary. But this does not mean that uh, the expert should lie. No, so the, the, the decision with, with the beneficiary is uh, to appoint the expert, and the expert's duty is to the court. But if the person is lying in their deposition, is this your question? Yeah, in my question, the beneficiary was, for example, the asylum, the claimant. And in the witness statement, something was wrong. And I realized it on a spelling the country. There was a story that uh, you can't show. You cannot change, for example, the place of the river in Africa. You cannot change the place of the mountain. You know, mm -hmm. I assessed the, the geographical situation of the region. She was going on left while she was describing something on the right. I told the, the, the solicitor that um, it's not possible. You know, you have some natural setting that you cannot change. She said, no, that is going to create a problem like that. So she obliged me to consider what the beneficiary was saying, which at least was not true. And of course, the judge does not care. They have the decision where when you read it and you know Africa, you have the feeling that people are, are, are playing in the court, you know, because everything is wrong. Okay, um, in this case, we, we are going very much into the, yeah. the, the practice of providing expert witness. I, I don't know if this is the place. I would suggest, ultimately, as in all profession, is a personal choice. I would suggest if I was asked uh, for, for a feedback or for, for, for advice, I would suggest you not to 
uh, not to state the false, not, not to go along the pressure of the lawyer, and, you, and we can also educate the lawyer in, in politely uh, and uh, in, with the respect of our professionalism. Um, but um, I, I think we wish, uh, this is what I was um, suggesting with uh, critical affirmation, we need to, to be aware of our duty and obligation, but also our right as experts, uh, and this will be ultimately to the benefit of the person for which we, we provide the service. Hmm. You had a question here, I think. <laughs> yes, and thank you for your uh, presentation. I admire it uh, once again. And uh, when we talk about uh, legal pluralism and multiculturalism, uh, the Spanish uh, culture comes to my mind. Maybe uh, I come from Turkey, a uh, kind of Spanish country. And I know some examples, for example, in London, there are Sharia law council. Uh, they usually uh, uh, use uh, cultural references uh, to discriminate women, and they explained uh, established uh, to solve the problems uh, Islamist society in terms of family law. So uh, I witnessed some cases in Turkey. Uh, some judges uh, didn't uh, imply the Turkish criminal court for Syrians uh, in where uh, the perpetrator and the victim uh, are Syrian, uh, according to Turkish law, criminal law, uh, getting marriage after 15 years old is crime, is rape. Uh, but the uh, judge didn't imply because of their culture in Syria, it's not illegal, so he didn't give any sentence to the perpetrator. And I want to ask, how can uh, we uh, how can we prevent it, this kind of misusing uh, the cultural uh, differences and what uh, should be uh, affect the role of cultural experts in on family issues? Thank you. Uh, um... Perhaps the, the, the easiest answer, to, there is no easy answer to, to this question, but uh, we could start from uh, the dif difference between cultural defense and cultural expertise. Cultural defense, even if it has developed us to uh, provide information to the court, is still um, the format is still the, um, the aim of the mitigation of the of the sentence. And this, again, um, should not go to the, the detriment of the, um, of the theoretical uh, formulation of cultural defense, rather to uh, its, um, its reception, probably, I would say, uh, because cultural defense initially uh, was um, formulated um, in, in, the, in the effort uh, of inclusion, uh, inclusion and appreciation of diversity, but then uh, the, the instrument itself perhaps was not uh, the best or really not to be the most performant. Um, and this is why we, with cultural expertise we, we insist on the uh, duty of the expert to the court. Uh, so, um, it, 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 I would say that uh, a cultural expert is in the best position to explain to the judge the complexity of the situation, and it is not the, it is not because uh, the litigant argues that that a certain situation is uh, legitimate that this situation is necessarily is, um, and um, it would be, for example, a, a good opportunity for the expert uh, in, in the example that you provided uh, to explain uh, the, the diversity of Muslim law and the fact that there are there have been evolution also in Muslim law and that uh, not necessarily uh, Muslim law is always uh, discriminating women 
uh, and not necessarily should be because uh, very often uh, in the essentialized vision of Muslim law, uh, it, it, there is a selective kind of selective transplant uh, in which um, the, the, the what what is known. Um, are uh, the, the kind of institutions that are detrimental to women's rights. But there, are, there have been also changes in, 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 mainly in, a, in most um, uh, Muslim media systems that have provided for more um, provision. And this, this is what the expert, in my view, should do. Uh, so to, to provide the, the, uh, the complexity of the situation and again to leave the decision to the judge. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much. Now we have a few questions um, from, from our, our colleagues who are, who are working remotely. Um, and um, John uh, Vandevert would like to ask. Based on your data, is cultural expertise most helpful within the European geography based on the diversity of cultural reality? So is there a need, therefore, in, I think what the question is, is there, is there a need, therefore, in areas where there is, there is a greater mix of populations for more cultural expertise rather than in Sweden, which is more remote? But that's the, that's the question. That's uh, yes. uh, so is that in effect the explanation for your graph? Um, I suppose, I don't know whether it is a, um, I don't want to hear sound like an expert witness, <laughs> like an expert witness, but surely Sweden has a very diverse population now. But anyway, I don't want to think about that question. Well, uh, it's interesting, but because this reflects uh, some of the um, response of our uh, interlocutors uh, when in the, in the quantitative Questioners. Uh, mm. In some perhaps context, uh, there is a perception of homogeneity. And so uh, the, the, the need of cultural expertise indeed is perceived uh, in connection with um, diverse society that may be other society, not the one which the respondent are and perceive as particularly homogeneous. Mm. As an anthropologist, I would say that uh, these are perception rather than, um, but uh, perception that are nevertheless important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's a very, very good answer. And, and Bruce, Bruce Miller, um, good afternoon to you, would like to say something. He says his regard concerning um, expert testimony after many years of doing this work in US and Canada is the quality of many expert reports that he has had to respond to, reports that misrepresent, misrepresent facts, literature, and issues. So there, as you see, he's worried about, about quality control of the expert witness. So what, do you, what do you think about that? Bruce, thank you very much for your question. And uh, well, Bruce um, has, uh, is doing a, a, a very interesting work in, uh, in Canada, and has worked particularly for War Concern uh, cases in which uh, social groups have been misrepresented. And this is indeed uh, something we, we, which increasingly uh, concern us uh, as, as an anthropologist and also particularly anthropologists who are uh, engaged uh, for uh, social problem solving. The, I don't have an answer for, for this. I, I share um, the, this professional concern um, and uh, I, the suggestion that we make as a project is to strengthen the ethics and the ontology of providing cultural expertise to increase um, collegial support, uh, to increase capacity building and opportunities for training uh, and um, at the same time uh, are strictly connected with that uh, to trust also uh, our, uh, the, the collaboration, uh, the professional, ethical and the ethological collaboration with uh, the, the, the judiciary. Uh, the judiciary have uh, the, the, their skills and their uh, capacity also 
uh, to evaluate uh, the, the, the quality of the service. Um, and, and what I would suggest is to, uh, to increase intersectoral professionality in that sense. Uh, so capacity building could uh, be provided not only uh, to experts, but also to the members of the legal profession. And your work, I think, Bruce, uh, already provides uh, some of the instrument uh, to overcome this very concerning situation. Well, thank you very much. And there's a question from Matt Stoyer, who, who says that, that clearly um, we witness the abuse of laws by illiberal actors in many countries. Um, and therefore, would you endorse enshrining a right to access to cultural expertise in constitutions so that there are more durable guarantees for cultural expertise to be provided? So, i.e., would you make it a legal requirement for cultural expertise to be provided? <laughs> a legal requirement. The, the, the legal requirement, uh, to some extent, exists already for in um, in uh, asylum law uh, and uh, international human rights uh, for what concerns international protection, in the sense that uh, the court, the decision-making authority, um, is required to have. Uh, and knowledge of the contextual facts, the ground, uh, and the knowledge that is also recent and first hand. Um, to, to, to extend to, uh, to other kind of law and jurisdiction, I would say that this is not, I, 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 have, I don't have the, uh, the, the expertise to, to, to suggest a, um, a change in the law. And I would say that perhaps uh, it would, what I see as closer is to provide a better service as anthropologists uh, to uh, the, 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 the judiciary, to the management of justice, to make justice more inclusive. Uh, we could, however, consider uh, perhaps at the level of academic engagement, a scrutiny uh, to, to engage with a scrutiny of the legislative process. And I know that for the, um, for example, in Italy, but also in other countries, at the level uh, of adoption of uh, new legislation, um, anthropologists, social scientists have been appointed uh, for advisory roles. And this is where I would say perhaps uh, the role of special expertise could, uh, could be considered. Thank you, that's very interesting. So we're almost out of time, but there are two more questions here. Could you answer them briefly? Uh, okay, they're slightly different questions. The first one is about culture, and it, um, which of course we could talk about for a long time. But the question is, how can you think of culture being specific to the local legal situation? Um, so the relationship between the, lo the local situation and, and the wider culture. And the other one is a more specific one. Do you get bullied? by other scientists who do not understand the importance of your expertise as a new type of expert witness. So have you had any resistance to the ideas that you've been putting forward? Okay. Then the, the, please, well, the final well, word is yours. Well, the, 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 the matter of uh, culture is something that, uh, I, as it concerns the, the whole discipline of anthropology, is culture uh, still something on which we, we can refer to? Uh, for explaining uh, the, the, what we do as human beings? Uh, I would say uh, no. Uh, we, we, we learn with, uh, with, with critical studies that culture is not the best uh, or the, the all explaining reference. Uh, we, it's rather a mix of um, financial, uh, biological, uh, political factor that um, that that uh, that is playing uh, human behavior. At the same time, uh, culture is remains a in, in pragmatic filter, pragmatically a reference in the language in the everyday language. And so in court, 
uh, we hear all the time uh, applicants and uh, litigants talking about culture, judges talk about culture. And when we have this um, component, I would say that social scientists are, are the best positioned to, uh, to, to, to talk uh, and to, to, to provide uh, the complexity of, uh, of what uh, may be perceived as culture, are and, and what in certain cases is not. Mm -hmm. Could I just say more quick reality? In reality, two sides can play in this game. Do you ever get cultural expert against cultural expert because both sides have engaged cultural experts? <laughs> yes, yes, it is possible. It is possible, especially in the common law system. Uh, where uh, more than one expert uh, are appointed, and sometimes also if experts are not appointed, if not, uh, if there are no two experts in courts, perhaps a third expert may be <laughs> consulted uh, to um, assess the expertise of one of the two experts uh, in court. Yes. Uh, all of that. And finally, have you had any resistance to your work from anybody? Has anybody said um, awful what you're doing? I think we do. We do all the time uh, <laughs> within within, within uh, the, the, the discipline itself. I think there is a tension between uh, the, 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 the anthropology as academic discipline, uh, which is considered as pure uh, and only uh, dealing with concept and so-called applied anthropology that uh, is uh, very often or historically considered as a secondary kind of uh, involvement or second, secondary time of kind of professionalism. Um, and uh, yeah, I think there is a disciplinary uh, bullying of anthropology. Anthropology is very often institutionally uh, in the position of serving other disciplines. There, well, ah, you want to make a, a very quick final comment, please. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for your time for um, those great questions. And um, it's a very small minor point. Um, you mentioned that the anthropologists in the UK or culture experts in the UK often uh, do pro bono work rather than being remunerated. And I work with a lot of culture experts, and I really am grateful what they do for free. Um, but in, when when you have given a qualitative interviews, did they mention like that that's the issue or the need of being remunerated or is there any way that structure can be placed where they, they can be adequately remunerated? Well, I think that even the UK, uh, compared to other countries, the legal aid covers the fees of the expert within certain parameters. Mm -hmm and uh, in certain specific uh, situation. Uh, nevertheless, uh, experts lament the difficulty to, to be, in fact, paid in, in spite of the legal aid provides for it. Uh, the solution, again, would be uh, perhaps uh, not easy, so I don't think we have an easy solution, but perhaps uh, a better um, awareness of um, our role as an expert uh, and um, a better political support as a profession. Mm -hmm. I, I, would. I just perhaps. want to add a comment, a legal comment. Some jurisdictions consider that um, when an expert is working for criminal is part of um, activism in the case. So they are not allowed if they have to be independent to support the case in some way by not being paid. Yeah, I can I can understand that might be an argument, but but of course the, the judge gets paid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. The judge paid. Yeah. Yeah. So they want everybody to be paid. If yeah. it's not you're like an NGO or a human rights defender who support the case at court, yeah. but you're not an independent um, perspective yes. Yeah. They consider the fact that um, if you do a pro bono job, it's like you join a human rights institution to, to, to do some activism on the case. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. to do an yeah. yeah. and Medical experts get paid, and Royal College of Medicine is very strongly sort of pushing forward the remuneration of the medical experts. So perhaps that sort of, you know, mm -hmm. bad methods and also the Thank you, Phil. Yes, it's answering to the full thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah.
That's a good point. Well, we could carry on for a long time, but thank you everybody for an absolutely fascinating evening and thank you to our speaker for this wonderful introduction to the subject. Thank you. Thank you.